Now this one came out really, really well. You don't understand how light this feels. It's a whole print too. It was really pressed well, you could see, especially with the face too as well. This one's a good piece. Switched up the game from screen, we ain't standing. Transfer superstars, but the fabric we imprinted. Transfer superstars, yeah, we did What's up, superstars? We're gonna take this mid-journey AI image and slap it on a shirt. But that's not all. We're actually also going to put this through Canva, putting some text on it, knocking out that background, then putting it through Adobe Photoshop, putting some half tones and adding more elements. So it should look more something like this. <sighs> that's better. Also, did I mention we're going to be selling this shirt? Check the link in the description below. And let's get started. Let's begin by opening the Canva software, then proceed to import the design we have prepared. Click on edit image at the top left, then select magic expand under whole page. This process is Canva's version of Photoshop's generative fill. It will take some time, but Canva will provide you with excellent suggestions. Pick one of the options, then click done. In the left panel, click add a text box, then go to the top and increase the font size. Double click the text box and type the text you want for the design. Go to the top part again and choose a font and color. To create a streetwear look, use Parada 1 for the font and red for the color. To enlarge the text, hold and drag the corner of the text box. You can also minimize it by dragging the corner of the text box. Center the text by navigating to position. Press Command C to copy the text and Command V to paste it. Place and align it in a column. Select all the text and choose Group. This feature allows users to combine multiple elements into one. Adjust the size and placement according to your preference. Copy and paste the image of the king, then go to Position and click Middle to center it. Go to Edit Image and choose BG Remover to create an underlying text effect. Now that we've finished creating the design, let's export it by going to Share, download and selecting JPG. Increase the quality to 100, then click the download button. Just wait for it to finish. The image will automatically be in your downloads folder. Check the finished image. Now, let's go to vectorizer.ai, which is a software where you can convert images to vectors. Minimize the window so we can see and place the designs on the side. Drag and drop the image and it will automatically trace it. Just wait for it to finish. The waiting time will depend on the complexity of the image. To adjust the number of colors in the vector, click the palette icon and choose the number you want. For now, I'll select 20 colors, then click OK. After selecting, it will regenerate based on the new trace settings. Download the file and select a format based on your preference. For now, I'll choose SVG. Let's move the SVG file to the side so we can view all the files we'll need. We'll now use Photoshop to create a halftone black knockout on our design to ensure it's DTF friendly. Click New File and create a document size 12.5 inches by 18.597 inches. Ensure the background color is set to transparent. Drag the image into Photoshop and press Enter to place it. To clean up the image, select the Marquee Tool. First, rasterize the layer, then go to Fill, then Content Aware. Now let's repeat this process on the other corners of the artwork. Right-click the layer, choose Duplicate Layer, and select New in the document. In this new file, we will create the halftone effect. Go to Image Mode Grayscale, simply click Discard. Go to Image Mode and select your 8 bits channel. Go to Image, Adjustment, Levels. Adjust the histogram by moving the sliders. The highlights represent the area where you can see the full image, while the shadows will be halftoned. Focus on modifying the image so that the edges are half-toned. Go to Image, Adjustments, Curves, and adjust the mid-tones and highlights as needed. Now go to Image, Mode, Bitmap. Flatten the layers. 
Choose half tone screen and adjust the frequency based on your preference. A lower frequency will create larger half tone dots, while a higher frequency will produce smaller dots. Press Command A on a Mac or Control A on Windows to select all, then press Command C on a Mac or Control C on Windows to copy. Go back to the original document and drag the layer to the Add a Layer icon. Click the Layer Mask icon. Enter Layer Mask mode by holding Option on a Mac or Alt on Windows, then paste the half tone from the other file. Rename the first layer to Reference. You can toggle this layer on and off to check if the knockout works. Create a new layer and use the Paint Bucket tool to fill it, making it the background layer. Go to the layer with the mask and choose the Eraser tool to add a grunge effect to the design. You can download these brushes from the description box. Toggle the background layer on and off to see where you are adding the grunge. Go to Image Trim, select Transparent Pixels, and check all the boxes under Trim Away. Now that we're done, let's export the design. Go to File Export as PNG. Ensure the transparency box is checked. For now, I'll name it Supreme King Halftone. Open Illustrator. I have already compiled splatter vectors, which you can download from the description box. Create a new document with dimensions of 900 pixels by 1339 pixels. Name the layer to Halftone. Create a new layer and place it behind all other layers. Name it Background and create a black rectangle shape. Open the file downloaded from Vectorizer AI. Delete all parts except for the crown, keeping only that element. Press Command C to copy, then go back to the original file. Create a new layer and paste the crown onto it. Zoom in to accurately place the crown. Adjust its size and position as needed. Open the splatter file and copy it, then paste it into the current file. Zoom out and let's begin designing the crown's colors. To edit the colors quickly, go to Select Same Fill Color and change it to yellow. I'll use the color scheme from the splatter file to create a high contrast effect with the half tone. Copy and paste the splatter, change its color, and adjust its placement accordingly. Highlight to select all, then cut to transfer it to a new layer. Open the layers panel and rename the layer to crown to organize the assets. Create a new layer and position it below crown. Paste the splatter and begin placing it behind the crown. You can also place splatters in front of the crown to achieve a seamless look. Ensure you are changing the active layer as you place them. Repeat these steps until you are satisfied with the quantity and placement of the splatters. Let's add some drips to the design. I'll use a special font called Dripping that features various drip style. To find the right drip, I'll type out the letters to explore the different options available in the font. Scale up the drip and then press Command-Shift-O on Mac or Control-Shift-O on Windows to outline the text. Right-click on the selected drips and choose Ungroup. Select one of the drips, cut it, and paste it to the edge of the crown to create the effect of paint dripping. Ensure it is placed in the correct layer. Add additional drips to the design as desired. Let's add a thunder in since I don't have it ready. Open Google Chrome and search for a thunder icon. Select the thunder icon design you prefer and save it to your desktop. Now let's return to the Illustrator file. Minimize the window if needed to see your desktop, then drag the thunder icon that we just downloaded into Illustrator. Click on the thunder icon, then use the image trace function and expand the design. Remove the background and use the eyedropper tool to select and change its color. You can adjust the placement and size of the thunder icon according to your preference.
Don't forget to rename the layers so we can easily identify the location of each asset. Create a new layer for the typography that we will be adding. Click the text tool and drag the side of the text box to upscale. For this design, I'll use a thick font like ZenBrush. You can download this font under our description box and try using it in creating your own version of artwork. Press I to activate the eyedropper tool. Select your preferred color, then adjust the size and rotate it as needed. Place the text in the center and align it to the horizontal center. Duplicate the text, change the color to red and swap the fill to stroke. Go to the stroke panel and change the cap to round cap and the corner to round join. Increase the stroke weight to make it more visible. Place the outline behind the yellow text, then slightly off-center the outline and adjust its placement to achieve the desired effect. Let's add a grunge effect to our text. Visit FreePick and search for free grunge assets that you can download. Type grunge in the search bar on FreePick and scroll through the results to find the grunge effect you want. Once you find a suitable one, download it to your computer. Once downloaded, double click to open it in Illustrator. Zoom in and select some grunge elements to place on the text. Compile several grunge pieces on the text to enhance its visibility. Highlight the grunge design, copy it and paste it into the original file in Illustrator. Remove the background from the grunge design and scale it down to fit your needs. Right click on the grunge design and choose release clipping mask. Go to window, choose pathfinder and zoom in to see it better. Zoom in and click on one of the strokes. Go to select same fill and stroke. This process will help us quickly select objects with similar appearance. Go to object expand and make sure the boxes for fill and stroke are checked. Highlight the text, including the grunge, and click Divide. Click on one grunge element, then go to Select Same Fill Color and delete it to remove elements with the same fill color. Go to Object Path Cleanup. This process is used to clean up unnecessary stray points in the paths. Make sure the text is centered. Now let's add a splatter effect to the text following the steps we used for the crown. Toggle off the background layer and remove the splatter and color scheme. Press Command Shift S on Mac or Control Shift S on Windows to save as. Finally, ensure that the format is print ready by selecting PDF as the file format. Hey superstars, today I'm thrilled to bring you guys some exciting updates from our website that's gonna revolutionize the way you guys order and design your prints. So let's dive right in. We've introduced a brand new gang sheet builder right on our website. This is a game changer for all our creative customers who prefer to take charge of their own designs. With our new builder, you have the power to lay out your own gang sheets exactly the way that you want it. So let's go ahead and take a look at everything that we're gonna be doing here today. All right, we got the prints. Let's take a closer look at them. We're gonna take a closer look at these prints. So just to give a good reference, we did put the solid image on here just to showcase what you're really gonna be getting if you print out the whole thing. I don't know if you can see how already this looks very, very heavy. Just because it's super solid doesn't mean it's gonna be very light on a shirt. But if you could see right here, we took a lot of the black, but even if you flip it over, you could see that we definitely kept a lot of the design. So I think this is gonna look really, really good. As well as also putting that Canva lettering on top, came out really, really well. And then the, just the Adobe Photoshop finisher to make everything just unique and something that's not just from Midjourney AI. So. Definitely use this guys as a tool so you guys could help your brand or whatever you guys want to do. So yeah, this one came out really well. All right, let's get to the shirts that we're going to be using. 
For blanks, we are using our Bella Canvas Extra Large Black Shirt. The model number is 3001 if you guys want to check it out. For our heat press, we have our Heatmaster Prisma. It's been a fan favorite for all our videos, so it just makes sense for us to use it now. It has a 16 by 20 layout, also a 10 inch pullout, and you can thread your shirts in there. So it makes it very easy for any type of project. <laughs> Let's get started. Let's get this pressed. touch on it and it looks like it doesn't hit the whole thing so we're gonna go on partial sides Just a closer look on each part. It, it really pressed well. You could see even the the sheet print that embedded itself on there. You don't understand how light this feels. Like it's it's a whole print too. Now this one came out really really well, especially with the face too as well. This one's a good piece. We did good, guys. All right guys, we showed you how to take this mid-journey AI design, run it through Canva to slap some text on it and actually take out that background. Then we put it through Adobe Photoshop to actually give it more half tones and add more elements. Now, we got a printable, wearable, sellable shirt. All right, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. We enjoyed making it. And if you guys are looking for a DTF supplier or just trying to replace your existing one, definitely give us a shot. All right, that's all for me for now. Please like and subscribe for more videos like this. I'll see you guys soon.